I firmly believe that you can tie the best carp rig in the world, but if you get the length wrong, you can have very little chance of catching a carp. Having your rigs the wrong length can lead to more hook pulls oh. and fewer pickups converted to hooked fish. So in this video, I'm gonna talk you through rig length and how to decide what length to make your carp rigs. So firstly, for any beginners or people that are new to carp fishing that are watching this video, what do I mean by rig length? Well, it's simply the length of line between your lead weight and your hook. Now rig length is very important as I'm going to show you in this video and many different factors contribute to getting it right consistently. Rig length for me is divided into three categories. Short rigs which are anything from say two to six inches, medium rigs which are kind of six to nine inches and long rigs which are anything over nine inches really. I fish rigs all the way down to two inches and anything up to 15 inches depending on the situation. Things like bottom substrate, baiting strategy, fish size, activity levels of the fish and angling pressure all play their part in determining how long to make your carp rigs. So let's break down each rig length category and discuss when you should use each one. The time to use a short rig, anything from say two to six inches, is when fishing with a solid bag. Now the idea is that your bait all goes inside a nice PVA bag with the rig and you cast it out and it's a nice little parcel on the bottom that the carp comes and sucks in hopefully your hook bait and your hook and your rig goes in the mouth as well and then they haven't got to move very far before they come in contact with the weight of the lead and hopefully get hooked. Now the only problem with this is due to the fact that the lead is so close to the fish during the fight you can quite often get hook pulls with really short rigs and solid bags so this is the time to start experimenting with two to six inch rigs until you find what works for you on your lake because every lake is different and every fish feeds differently as well so if you find you're losing fish try lengthening your rig in your solid bag and hopefully that will lead to fewer hook pulls. You can also fish drop off inline systems as well to lose the lead so that sort of takes it out of the equation and hopefully you're in more direct contact with the fish and there's less chance of a hook pull. Other times I'll use a shorter rig is when I think the fish will be moving more slowly. So for example in the winter when the water temperature is really low the fish will be slowing right down and the short rig might be necessary to hook those fish. Also if your baiting strategy is tighter the fish aren't going to be moving around much between mouthfuls and they might just sit on the bottom sucking and blowing so you need a shorter rig so that you shorten the amount of time that it takes for the fish to come in contact with the weight of the lead when it moves off with the rig. Also on super pressured lakes where the fish are quite wise and cute to rigs, a shorter rig can be an advantage because often those fish will be slowly moving and not really um, moving between mouthfuls and you can often trip up really wary fish with very short rigs. Now you have to consider the substrate of the lake bed when you're fishing short rigs because a really soft bottom, obviously the lead can sink in and pull a short rig and hook bait into the bottom and it'd be very hard for the fish to find it. So I tend to try and fish firmer areas when using shorter rigs just to make sure that that rig's presented nicely and is available to the fish when they come into your swim. Now rigs of six to nine inches such as this one could be considered as medium length rigs and what you find is this is the sort of length of rig that most people will choose to use despite the situation they're faced with. Now this is a mistake and even a nine inch rig can be too short for really really big fish or super soft lake beds. The time to use a medium length rig is for kind of all round fishing on lakes with fish up to about 30 pound. I generally go slightly longer in the summer because the fish are moving more quickly and a longer rig goes further into the mouth giving you more time to potentially get a hook hold as the fish moves off and goes to the next patch of bait. Consider the spread of your bait as well. If you're fishing over a scattering of boilies then a nine inch rig is a good starting point as the fish will obviously be tipping down picking up a bait and moving on to the next one. Very different feeding situation to if you've spotted out a load of small particles. Fish tend to kind of just hover on the spot and just hoover up little mouthfuls and barely move at all so in that situation a shorter rig is better but fishing over a spread of bait use a slightly longer rig. Eight to nine inches is a really good starting point but depending on the substrate go even longer if you think your lead is going to be sinking in. On the flip side of that, on really firm lake beds such as gravel spots and tighter baiting situations, go to the shorter end of the scale of medium rigs, so say six or seven inches, because obviously the fish won't be moving as much, your lead's not going to be sinking in, so you can get away with a shorter rig and hopefully hook those fish that little bit quicker. Now when I go to France, for example, 
and I know there's a real chance of a 60 or a 70 pound carp coming along. I always start with rigs of say 12 to 14 inches long and obviously adjust tactics according to my catch rate and, and how I think it's going. But starting with a longer rig gives you a much better chance of landing those bigger fish because their mouths are much bigger They've got to tip up quite far to reach the bottom and a longer rig just gives them that extra rope to hang themselves with if you like. So what I always try to do is adjust the length of my rigs according to the biggest fish in the lake that I'm targeting. Also on softer lake beds where there's a real chance that your lead's going to sink into the bottom then obviously a longer rig is better in this situation because if you've cast out a, a 12 inch rig but your lead's gone in six inches say into the bottom then your rig's only going to be fishing about six inches and if you're fishing a spread of bait and you're targeting larger fish then a six inch rig isn't really going to be long enough so you may want to even consider fishing up to 15 inches or something like that to just take into account that six inches where the lead's sinking in so try to when you cast out feel the lead down feel it hit the bottom and you can ascertain kind of how soft it is try dragging it back as well and if it's sort of quite hard at first to drag it back it means that your lead's plugged into the bottom so adjust your rigs a little bit longer to account for this perhaps use a helicopter rig as well if you're worried about it so that the lead can sink in but the hook link can still ride up your main line and be presented nicely over that sort of softer area or even consider fishing a firmer area if you think there's one in the vicinity and therefore you can get away with a slightly shorter rig of eight to nine inches but if you really are going to fish in the soft stuff particularly in the autumn when the fish are feeding on the natural food in the silt anyway then go to a longer rig just to make sure you are presented properly over those softer lake beds now i'm not saying you can't catch big fish on short rigs you definitely can but it's all about adjusting to the situation that you face with in front of you i've always found that when i've gone longer with my rigs i tend to catch bigger fish and actually generally catch more fish as well and have a lot less hook pulls. So what I always try and do is fish the longest rig I possibly can in the sort of situation that I'm faced with. So weather and temperature conditions, baiting situation, the size of fish and angling pressure all play a part, but I try and get my rigs as long as I can in those situations. And obviously experimenting on different waters when you're new to a lake, you've got to try things and see what works, kind of keep notes and write everything down and um, you'll build up a picture of, of what's going to work for you on that lake and hopefully build captures from there. So when I talk about rig length in relation to the size of the fish that you're targeting, as a general rule, if I'm fishing on a lake that's got doubles and twenties, then I think I can get away with a six to eight inch rig. If I'm fishing a lake with twenties and thirties in, then generally I'll go sort of eight to 10 or 12 inches and anything above that where I know there's 40 pounders and 50 pounders or even above that, then I'll usually start on a 12 to 15 inch rig and adjust it from there depending on the lake bed that I'm fishing over and the baiting situation as discussed previously in the video. So there's a lot of information there and a lot to think about so what I'm going to try and do now is briefly summarise what we've talked about and hopefully it'll help make things a little bit clearer for you. So as a general rule the firmer the lake bed that you're fishing on the shorter the rig that you can get away with and on the flip side of that the softer the lake bed the longer your rigs need to be to make sure that they're presented out of the silt and not getting pulled down into it. The size of the fish that you're targeting is an important thing to think about. As a general rule the bigger the fish that you're looking to catch the longer your rigs need to be to account for the size of the fish its mouth is bigger and it's got to tip down to pick up your bait before it tilts up to move off. You need that extra length of rig so that you can get it properly in its mouth and go far back in its mouth so it can hook it properly. If you've got a really short rig with big fish, you tend to just hook them in the lips or it fall out of their mouth altogether before they've been hooked. On the other side, smaller fish, you can shorten your rigs down. They're faster moving, they're more greedy. They tend to just like suck at stuff and move off. So you can catch smaller fish with shorter rigs, but you have to think about the substrate that you're fishing over. You also want to think about all the factors that I've told you that affect the movement of the fish. That can be water temperature, so in the winter the fish tend to slow down. In the summer when the water is warmer the fish will be moving more quickly. Your baiting situation can affect the movement of the fish. The wider spread your bait is the more the fish are moving so you have to use longer rigs. Conversely the tighter your baiting situation the shorter rigs you need because the fish won't be moving as much. Really really pressured fish on pressured lakes they're not going to be moving as much as well 
well because they're really slow moving, shy, cautious fish. So a shorter rig is better in that situation to trip up the fish that aren't moving much off your spot once they've taken a mouthful of bait. As a general rule, a slower moving fish is a shorter rig and faster moving fish tends to be a longer rig. And the more a fish is likely to move between mouthfuls as well, again, a longer rig is better in that situation. Also, it's important to note that none of these guidelines are hard and fast rules. It's up to you to kind of experiment with the lakes that you're fishing because every lake is different and all fish in different waters feed differently as well. So what I'm saying is these are general guidelines, things to think about before you tie up your rigs and cast them out. But you've got to make up your own minds. How is your angling going? You know, are you catching enough fish for what you think is reasonable for that water that you're fishing or do you think you could be catching more see what other people are doing on the lake as well and try to ascertain what the best length of rig is for the lake that you're fishing and then think about the size of the fish the baiting situation and how much you think the carp would be moving and the bottom substrate as well let me know in the comments down below guys what your thoughts are on rig length and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video, it just helps me get the videos out to more people and grow the channel. Check out these other videos on the screen now for some more useful carp fishing tips. And I hope it's been helpful for you. Thanks very much for watching and tight lines.